How's it going, everybody? My name is Cam White, and welcome back to your favorite weekly horoscope, What the Fuck is Going On in the Universe for July 13th through July 19th of 2020. Thank you guys so much for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. Sorry, I'm drinking my morning coffee right now, so bear with me here. Um, yeah, thank you guys for being here. A big announcement real quick before we get started. Um, I just hit 20,000 subscribers. So thank you guys. Um, it means a lot that 20,000 of you have found my videos and thought they were good enough to subscribe to. So um, that means a lot. <clears throat> thank you for being here with me. And if you've been following me since like day one, you have seen how much change my videos have had and um, just change that I've definitely gone through in my life. So it's kind of cool to have you guys all there for that. Um, second announcement. Uh, this weekend, I am doing a webinar uh, with Astrology, uh, Fresh Voices in Astrology. So uh, make sure you follow them to stay notified to get the Zoom link for when the meeting's going to be. But um, I'm doing a webinar about uh, what we called Woe Be Gone Benefics, basically talking about Venus and Jupiter and their signs of detriment and fall and how good things can come out of bad places. Um, it's going to be this Saturday, uh, July 18th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I don't have a link I could share with you guys at this moment, um, nor do I know exactly what the price is going to be at this moment um, now that I think about it. Um, however, if you guys go to Astrology Voices, uh, either on their Instagram or Twitter, uh, you could st you could follow them and stay in the loop and uh, be able to know or be able to get the link when it gets posted and everything, which I think is going to be happening either later tonight, Sunday night, or later on Monday night. But yeah, that's something that's going to be happening. I'm really excited to actually do this talk. Um, this is going to be, I think, my first webinar, my first like official webinar. So definitely come and check it out if you can. If not, don't worry about it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, other than that, that's kind of like the two big announcements I wanted to get out of the way real quick. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the horoscope and what's kind of going on. Um, honestly, there's not a lot going on this week. So you can kind of be excited for once about something. Uh, this week's pretty chill for the most part. We are starting this week off with the moon entering Taurus, making a sextile to Mercury, um, with the sun now opposite Jupiter. Now with Mercury, Mercury just stationed direct, by the way. So like, um, I'm recording this on Sunday morning. I meant to record this last night. So um, this is today when you guys will definitely be watching this. So with Mercury just now stationing direct, like, I don't know about you guys, but it feels really nice. <laughs> it feels really good. This Mercury retrograde was like really funky. Um, it wasn't super awful, but the, the square to Mars has been rough. Um, but with Mercury stationing direct now in Cancer, there's this sense of clarity over what is needed, over, you know, how to nurture, how to take care of um, that TLC, you know, stuff I was talking about with my monthly horoscope, because I really, really went into this Mercury retrograde in my monthly horoscope, too. Um, now that Mercury's direct, uh, it is making, um, or why I wanted to bring this up is the moon's entering Taurus, now making a sextile to Mercury. So with the moon in Taurus, there's this sense of, you know, being grounded, feeling a little bit more stable, feeling a little bit more secure, feeling a little bit more lazy. Um, and with the moon sextiling Mercury, there's this communication of like, hey, you know, Mercury and Cancer is trying to figure out, you know, what we need, how to best take care of ourselves. And the moon in Taurus go or the moon going into Taurus making that sextile is like, hey, it's OK to kind of just like lay down. It's OK to like just eat good food as a form of nutrition, as a form of, you know, taking care of yourself. Um, it's OK to just like lie around. It's OK to not be super um, busy. Um, Self-care can look a lot of different ways with <clears throat> this kind of aspect. However, with the moon going into Taurus, there is this sense of, you know, things are a lot easier. And if you want to find a little bit more of a stable way, a more grounded way to get comfortable, Monday is definitely a good time to do it. Um, however, the one thing that makes me, I don't want to say go, not go back on it, but um, with the moon in Taurus, there's a sense of being comfortable, right? But also on Monday, we are going to be starting the day off with the sun opposite Jupiter. We're actually not starting the day, mostly closing the day with the sun opposite Jupiter. And Jupiter's retrograde right now. So it's kind of like, <laughs> um, well, I should say the sun, the sun opposite, uh, the sun opposition to Jupiter is always when Jupiter's retrograde. And so there's this kind of this realization of bringing light or bringing awareness to, you know, what kind of Jupiter's doing. Sun's in Cancer right now going, hey, you know, bringing illumination, showing light to what we need, what uh, what we need to defend, what needs to be taken care of, what needs to be um, literally nurtured. And with Jupiter and Capricorn, there's a sense of, uh, I don't want to say unhealthy, uh, the structure, the discipline of getting there is hard wrapping up the mindset um, or taking on the mindset, taking on the belief of like, 
you know, um, I have, it's kind of like, oh, what's a good way to put this one? I'm kind of struggling with this one at the moment. My coffee's just like starting to hit me. I meant to record this last night, but a water pipe broke in my house. And so I had a plumber come over and I couldn't record. And then all of a sudden, once the plumber left, I accidentally closed my eyes and then I woke up at two in the morning and I was like, whoops. So, um, I'm still a little foggy minded from falling asleep so early, but with the sun opposite Jupiter, um, starting on Monday, and I did talk about this in my monthly horoscope, um, the big thing I think is just going to be being aware of what needs to be taken care of. Like I'm the analogy I used was like, this is kind of like taking your car to the mechanic and being like, Oh boy, you know, what's going to be wrong with the car this time, you know, what needs to be taken care of here. And there's this sense of, you know, untrustworthiness. There's this sense of scarcity. There's this sense of not knowing how, you know, like if you don't speak car, if you don't speak mechanics, going, taking your car, that's, you know, dealing with problems to the mechanics, probably even a scarier experience. And that's kind of like Jupiter and Capricorn here conjoining Pluto. It's like, you don't know, you know, you don't know anything about car mechanics, but you know that the check engine lights on. So you take it to the mechanic and you're just hoping to God, he doesn't screw you over. And on the sun opposite Jupiter day, it's kind of like, you know, what, even though we may not know how to make the plan, we don't know how car mechanics work. Our car needs to be taken care of at the end of the day. So we're just going to have to find either a way to trust the mechanic that we're working with or find a trustworthy mechanic or just better familiarize ourselves with the mechanics of a car. So when your mechanic says, hey, you know, your clutch is burnt out and, you know, your let's say your spark plugs are gone and this and that and that's all like basic stuff like but that you would be able to recognize what that means um i think this is a time of like educating yourself of you know how things operate this is jupiter right jupiter just wants things to make sense and in capricorn it's like no you kind of have to understand how it operates and how it works um and i think on monday this is kind of just taking self-care and taking um the stuff that we need to take care of and just kind of getting out of our comfort zones to learn how it operates, to learn how it works, to better establish a system to get there. <clears throat> so that's kind of like Monday starting off this week. You know, it is kind of exciting. It's kind of weird, but again, not a lot's going on this week. So once we jump into Tuesday, that's when we're going to have the sun make an opposition to Pluto, which I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not going to talk too much about, but the sun opposite Pluto thing's a whole nother story. Uh, and then the moon's going to conjoin Uranus early in the morning and then separate from Uranus. So as we move on to Tuesday, the sun starts to make that opposition to Pluto. It's going to be more later in the day. And the only thing I really wanted to say with this is just like, it's fear. It's a lot of scariness. It's a lot of like, you know, uh, when you hand your keys to the mechanic and they're like, hey, we got to replace the transmission. It's a thousand dollar, you know, it's a fifteen hundred dollar job give us the keys, please. And we'll see you in like three days. It's like, okay, here's the keys to my car. I hope you don't fuck me over on this one. Um, having that sun opposite Pluto, there's this realization of fear. There's this realization of, you know, what can go wrong. Um, there's this, and it's also the sense of like urgency and kind of like fighting, like, like, oh, you know, um, it's kind of like going to the doctor during a pandemic. It's like, I need to go to the doctor for X, Y, and Z, but I'm scared because, you know, there's a global pandemic going on. This is kind of like that sun opposite Pluto having to do stuff, even though <clears throat> the, what, you know, the way around it is also kind of scary and intimidating. So I think on Tuesday, it's, it's a first step in a forward in, in moving forward, but it's also a scary first step in moving forward. And the one reason I kind of bring that up to is because the moon conjoining Ron Uranus, <laughs> the moon conjoining Uranus in the morning, um, and then starting to leave it and basically not do anything too much after that, we're gonna have to get uncomfortable. Because when the moon first gets into Taurus and then makes that sextile to Mercury, there is the sense of being comfortable. But as it gets closer to Uranus, that sense of comfort is, you know, vanishes very quickly. Um, the moon conjoining Uranus really brings volatility, unpredictability, like the, with the moon conjoining Uranus, I always say it's like such a good time to use, like to just do a random thing, something that's, it's kind of like, you know, when you're like next to the pool or like at the lake or the ocean, you're like, I don't want to get in the water. I don't want to get in the water. You're like, oh, I'm going to get in the water, but I don't know. It's like the moon conjoining Uranus is like when you finally just say, fuck it, I'm going to jump in the water right now. Like that's your best opportunity to. 
And with the sun opposite, uh, opposite Pluto, there is this scary side of it, but the sun's in Cancer right now, so it's kind of like what needs, what actually, what do you actually really need to take care of during this moment? Um, so that's kind of a thing, but with that kind of going on, I just want to emphasize again, like, trust your intuition with what's the right thing to do and what's not the right thing to do. Um, but in this case, there's a lot of getting out of your comfort zone for sure with what's going on here. And I would suggest not just repeating the same thing over and over again, like actually doing something different this time, doing something that is, um, how do I say? Um, yeah, doing something new, doing something, you know, the moon's now starting to make its way to that new moon in cancer. So I think this is a great time to kind of like initiate those uncomfortable changes that we have to in order to kind of like get this new moon dialed in that we'll be talking about. Well, we'll be talking about it next week. But anyway, I don't even know if I'm making sense. My my coffee hasn't like done all of the work it needs to with my brain yet. So then we get to Wednesday. Um, and as we get to Wednesday... We're going to have the moon make that trine to Jupiter and Saturn, and then it's going to move into Gemini. And that's kind of like the only thing that's going on. And also, if we look at Wednesday, too, that sun opposite Pluto, sun opposite Jupiter thing, like, it's, it'll be also happening, it'll be happening on the 15th, too. Um, it's kind of like during just like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But uh, the moon is going to be making a trine to Jupiter trine Pluto, it's going to trine Saturn, and then it'll move into Gemini. This sounds very, you know, how do I say? It's like, you can get comfortable. Like, it's kind of like getting out of, getting out, you only have to get out of your comfort zone for like 10 seconds, and then you can get, com it's kind of like when you jump in the water, right? The first 10 seconds are like, oh, this is like, woo, like, you know, it, it sucks, but then like, you know, 10 seconds later, it's, you're like, ooh, the water's nice. Like, you can get comfortable in it. And that's kind of like the moon in the later Taurus trining Jupiter and trining Saturn. But as the moon's trining Jupiter, there's optimism. There's hope here. It's like, hey, you know, this actually feels good. Jupiter and Capricorn's kind of nervous about the way things are supposed to work, um, the understanding the system, and the moon and Taurus is starting to get more comfortable with it. So it kind of alleviates Jupiter here. And Saturn's back in Capricorn now. It's kind of like, you know, we got to get business done. We got to get shit. We got to get shit done. Um, Saturn's in Capricorn. There's there's walls. There's physical barriers, and um, the Moon in Taurus is like using that as a support system here. It Saturn is in the um, superior position in this case, so there is this sense of you know being supported by Saturn almost. Yeah, sure. Saturn's retrograde, so it's not like it's of the utmost support. Um, but I think as the Moon's making that try and decide and there is some support there is some support in getting out of your comfort zone and then getting re then getting get getting comfortable in a new position um and then the moon moves into gemini later on that evening and so the moon moving into gemini is just kind of like when we go from the physicality of things to the more like logical side of things to the more mental side of things but the transition is i think this time around is kind of more of like thinking a lot getting a lot of thinking done i don't know how else to say this let me go ahead and move on let's move on to um thursday because the moon with the moon actually in gemini its first aspects are going to be a sextile to mars and then a conjunction to venus which i think makes this moon in gemini a little bit easier to understand because as the moon does move into gemini i think it's kind of like all right now we get to think about how we feel about things it's kind of like all right how do I even, I don't even need to explain this. You guys actually fucking get what I'm trying to fucking say. Um, but as the moon makes that original, like, it's going to make a sextile to Mars, then conjoin Venus. So there's this sense of, like, okay, I know what I need to do. Whoops, I just, like, gleeked everywhere. Do you guys know what that is? Like, when you, like, move your tongue in a weird way and, like, the saliva gets spit out. I do it all the time, and I don't know how to, like, stop doing it. Like, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, getting too personal with you guys. <laughs> anyway. Um, the moon's going to sextile Mars. And so this is kind of like, all right, I'm feeling ambitious. Now that I understand what I'm doing, I need to move forward in this way. Uh, I know what I need to be pursuing. And the moon's going to conjoin Venus where it's kind of like, you know, now that you're in the, to go back to the water analogy, now that you did the uncomfortable thing of just jumping in the water, now you can actually have fun in the water. Um, 
And the moon sextiling Mars is just kind of giving that, you know, ambition to do something with it. And the moon conjoining Venus is just kind of giving that harmony to connect with something like this is stimulating. This is exciting. Um, that's kind of like the thing, just like Thursday just makes Thursday makes things kind of seem really easy. Not a lot of hard aspects going on here. Um, yeah, I can't even like I said, there's not a lot going on this week, but this seems <clears throat> like almost one of the easiest days here. And I think that's the only thing I really need to say. I, I want to say about Thursday I'm kind of flying through this horoscope. Um, anyway, we get to Friday and that's when the moon's going to square Neptune. Now, of course, you know me and how I feel about this and Neptune. Um, this is where things will kind of get confusing. <laughs> a good, a good to go back to the water analogy. This is like, do I need to put more sunscreen on? Am I doing okay? Am I hungry yet? What time is it? Like, you know, when, you know, when you're having fun, you don't know, like time just kind of flies, but the moon's going to make that square to Neptune where this is where you can kind of psych yourself out. This is where you can kind of talk yourself out of stuff like, oh, you know, I, you know, this happened, this happened. So it means this and this and this and that when really you're just kind of making up stories. This is definitely a day where you can start making up a lot of stories about shit. So with the moon in Gemini, try to shut yourself up. <laughs> try to <laughs> try to or the thing is with the moon in Gemini, your mind's going to be going, you know, a million miles an hour. Try to just go like 700,000 miles an hour, not a million. Like you're going to be going fast, but just try to like not go overly fast. Um, and as the moon squares Neptune too, Neptune's just making things confusing like it normally does. Sure, there is this uh, with Neptune, you know, distorting how things look, this is, there is an opportunity here to make things look very idealistic, uh, and being able to contort the way that we see things. But with the moon and Gemini making a square to it, there's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like when you're, uh, what is the, have you guys ever seen the ugly paintings? Like the, um, the, the ugly restoration paintings that people do, like they'll get like some old, like 16th century painting and then they get it restored and then it just like looks uglier. Like <laughs> I feel like that's the moon and Gemini squaring Neptune. It's like, Oh, this didn't turn out the way I envisioned it in my head. This wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, so try not to restore anything that doesn't need to be restored is a good way to put it. Um, on Friday. And I think on Friday too, Try not, to, try not to get annoyed. Um, there's going to be a lot of blabber. It's just going to be easy to get confused about everything. Like, I wouldn't be surprised in the news on Friday that there's just a bunch of bullshit. Just a bunch of shit that makes everything. Because everything right now is very confusing. Because, of course, if you live here in America, we haven't had a one story of what's actually going on in the world. It's been this and this and this and that. Um, so, on Friday, try not to be too confused. <clears throat> um, try to just, like, you know also calm down the moon's going to be conjoining to the north node here don't be going super super fast um because if you the smaller mistakes you make when you're going fast uh turn into make bigger results you know what i mean turning your if you're driving on the freeway and you barely irk your wheel you'll go whoosh really fast right but if you're going 10 miles an hour and you irk your wheel like you really don't even go anywhere so just be careful on friday um then we get to uh saturday then the moon's going to enter Cancer and conjoin Mercury. And this is actually when things get interesting. I know this has been a boring horoscope for you guys probably. Um, whoops. Um, this is when things get really interesting. One, this is when I'm doing my um, my talk, so make sure you guys show up to that. If not, I'll remember. I'm just kidding. But um, as the moon goes into Cancer, you got to remember, we're getting ready for this new moon in Cancer, which I feel like this is what this whole week is about. Like, yeah, sure, the moon's going to go into Taurus, then it's going to go into Gemini, which is kind of like cool, but it's just kind of like setting stuff up for this new moon it's kind of like you can't have a birthday you have to go to the store to get the cake for the birthday party and then you got to go and get supplies and food for the birthday party and then it's like the new moon the moon going into cancer is like we're finally getting to the house to set up the birthday party um with this moon in cancer this is kind of now going like all right this is what i have to take care of this is what I need. This is what I'm feeling. Both luminaries are in the same sign. So there's an illumination here. There's a big focus on cancer, on our needs. What do we need to protect? What do we need to nurture? What do we need to, you know, feed almost as a, in a sense? And the moon's applying to Mercury here. There's a mental, I don't, how do I say this? There's a, um, you know, there's a loudness to it. 
there's a there's a lot of communication with this there's a lot of like mercury at this point is kind of going like yeah like this is what i need this is kind of like affirming to yourself that you're doing these things that you need to do and that you're doing this for the right reasons and that you know this is what this is what is needed essentially like i feel like with this new i mean this new moon in cancer which will it's basically how we start next week off um is going to be literally opposite saturn exactly so there is this really heavy seriousness to this right um i talked about this like so much in my monthly horoscope and if you haven't watched that make sure you check it out um it's a little bit later in there because i know it's like two and a half hours but just scroll your way through that and you'll find it but as we're building up to that and on saturday as we have the moon conjoining mercury this is kind of like telling yourself like yeah this makes sense yeah like this is what i need yeah also, this is Mercury still in its shadow phase. So this is all stuff that we've had to go over with this Mercury retrograde. This is all just affirming that like, yeah, now that we're done with this Mercury retrograde and we can move forward, like this is the right way to move forward. This is the right thing to do. And this is how I need to take care of it. This is how I need to nurture. This is how I need to feed it. Um, and at the same time, this is cancer, right? Like this is uh, initiating. It's a cardinal sign. This is literally starting something. Um, this is a water sign. So you know, I, I, I don't like the how big of a brushstroke people use for water signs when it comes to the word emotional. I really put emotions underneath fire signs, to be honest with you. There's so much more fire. Uh, there's so much more like emotional, like more with like passion. I feel like water, water is really about like how things kind of sit and settle, how things kind of like, you know, move, move within a, a, a defined boundary, right? What can we fill up? What can we, um, what's what's being, I guess, like what is literally being held, right? Um, what is liquid? What is, you know, I don't want to say changeable or malleable. Like liquid is very hard to contain. Liquid can move this way and move that way. Um, it's it, it moves, you know, like the oceans of the tide move with the moon, right? Like there's this sense of, you know, cycles with the water. Um, but there's also the sense of consistency without being consistent, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know what my thoughts are with that. I'll have to think about more about that. Um, however, why I'm bringing all of this up is like, yes, this is this does have to deal with emotions, but this isn't necessarily about being emotional. This does have to do with, you know, feeling something and, you know, feeling sensitive, but this doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to reflect feeling bad or feeling sad. This just has to be reflective of feeling more. I think a good way to look at it is authentic. This is the moon in cancer and it's home sign. Like this is recognizing and being aware of how we actually feel about a situation and being in tune with those feelings, not ignoring them, not hiding them. Like, feeling them, expressing them. And the moon conjoining Mercury here, you know, is speaking that out. That's Mercury, right? Mercury is literally like bringing up the microphone and being like, what do you have to say about that? Um, <laughs> and so there's a lot of understanding. There's a lot of, you know, talking through this type of stuff. So I think, I think Saturday is just kind of like when when the domino effect kind of starts for this new moon in cancer, because I think this new moon in cancer is like kind of like a really big deal, but that's just me anyway. Um, oh yeah. I didn't even talk about how it's squaring. Um, oh, that's Sunday. That's why I was like, wait, what? Um, let me double check here. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, that's not till later. So then we get to Sunday. Um, and that's when the moon's going to make a square to Mars. It's going to try Neptune and go opposite Jupiter. So this is kind of a funny little psh, 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 psh thing going on. Um, the moon making that square to Mars is kind of like, you know, uh, for, for one, I've got to sit here and say, I think we can all agree Mars and Aries is very tiring. Um, I've been, you know, I've been saying this for a long time. I made the analogy and if, I mean, if you, if you're a client of mine, I've been, I've used, I've, I think I've used this analogy literally with every single client I've had this year with the Mars retrograde. Um, with Mars, and I'm pretty sure I've said this in a bunch of videos too, but to go back to it, like Mars retrograded in late Aries at like 25 Aries back in like the like fall of 1941. This was the fall and winter when Nazi Germany tried to invade Russia and that didn't work. They were, the Nazi, uh, the Nazis were literally so like underfed, malnourished. They were so tired from the war effort and, um, you know, 
Also, it was uh, Russian winter, which is, if you guys are into history at all, no one's ever been able to invade Russia in the winter successfully. Like, it just doesn't happen because Russia's winters are so bad. Um, and so, basically, they tried to do it during this Mars retrograde in Aries, and they had a retreat. It didn't work. Um, the They were able to, the people of St. Petersburg, I think, were able to defend themselves. Um, and the analogy I've been using for this is, like, if we've been tired from a war effort, maybe we shouldn't try to conquer a feat that's never been conquered before. And I, I use that analogy specifically of like with Mars and Aries, it may feel like this is the right time to go and pick up stuff and do all of this stuff that we need to do. But like if we're tired, like resting is just as important as being active. You know, I've been reading more up about this. It's just like, you know, just like dieting and exercise, not even dieting, just to focus on being active, having exercise is really important for your health, your physical, your spiritual, your mental health. Sleeping is just as important and sleeping can be even worse or not getting enough rest can be even worse for your health than doing, than not, you know, um, exercising. And so with the moon making the square to Mars, I think there's this sense of like, you know, what needs to be maybe put on pause for a second. What maybe you know, how do we, uh, well, I don't want to even say put on pause. How do we get the most out of this energy? You know, working 24 hours straight and then sleeping for 24 hours straight isn't productive. That's not efficient, right? But, you know, organizing yourself to like, hey, I wake up at this early time. I have this this time to myself and then I get all of my work done when I have the most of my energy and then I make sure I go to bed early and get a good night's rest. This is, you know, balancing your needs with um, what needs to get done. Like, you know, let's say like I try to I've been thinking I was just thinking this morning because I like woke up early for the first time in a while. And um, it was I was thinking I was like, man, I can't believe I used to get up at like 6 a.m. to go to fucking school every day. Like, that's crazy to me. Um, but it's also like a, a good system. And, and I think of when I was a kid, how there was like athletes like the like I, I was not athletic in school. But, like, the kids that would, like, wake up for water polo. And they'd get up at, like, they'd get to school at, like, 5 in the morning. And then, like, have their water polo practice. Then have school. And then have, like, after school practice. Then, like, get home. And it's just, like, god damn. Like, that's a lot to do. But I feel like the moon making that original square to um, first making the square to Mars is kind of, like, you know, there's give and take. You got to focus more on your on your needs here. Um, even though you want to go out and play, you want to do all of this intense stuff. Like this is kind of like, you know, in, in order to be a better, uh, athlete, you also need to rest as well. What was the other thing? Oh yeah. It's making, and also, so the moon's going to make that square to Mars. So this is kind of like, okay, let's chill out for a second. Then the moon's going to make a trine to Neptune, which I'm not super like, into this at the moment this is just kind of it's not the biggest deal in the world but it's kind of like you know um it's it's there and the one thing i just really wanted to bring up with that is this is kind of like nostalgic feeling this is gonna feel like i like to when i see stuff in like cancer with with this neptune pisces stuff it seems like picturesque like very movie type setting right it can just feel very special is a good way to put it what is the moon makes that trying to neptune uh it it will then leave Neptune, make an opposition to Jupiter, where then it comes down to like, all right, I have to do this. Uh, Jupiter and Capricorn of like being able to understand the, the, the mindset, the philosophy of being able to limit or restrict yourself and have the discipline to take on these new, you know, self-care regimens or to you know, um, really take things, I guess, more seriously in, in the aspect of what you need to take care of. Like, this isn't like taking things seriously, like, you know, taxes are serious. Like this is like taking your emotions, your emotional health, your men your, your mental health very, very seriously. And I think as the moon makes that square to Mars, this is kind of like, stop the game, you know, stop, you know, stop moving. Moon makes that opposition to Jupiter. Like this is where we need to focus on. And Jupiter and Capricorn is conjoining Pluto retrograde right now, so Jupiter's kind of like <laughs> out in 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 a sense. And I think as the Moon uh, makes that opposition to Jupiter, this is right before this new Moon. There's this sense of like, all right, this is the mindset I've got to take on. This is the plan essentially, um, and this is how we kind of like close out Sunday and we get into next week, which I'll talk about. 
and we get to that new moon exactly opposite Saturn, which I'm not going to talk about right now. We're going to, that's, that's how we basically start next week off. And so, like I said, um, this week is really getting and building up to this new moon in cancer. Cause I think this new moon, in Can- I mean, this is the first lunation in cancer we have. That's not an eclipse since October, November of 2018, when all of this kind of started. So it's, um, it's important, you know, and it's also exactly opposite Saturn. Like there's a lot of seriousness here. This is, uh, this is pretty, this is real fucking life as I like to say. Um, and so I think this is just the week to really go like, all right, what do I need to take care of and not doing it right this moment, but taking this whole week to really build up to making the changes that are needed, um, to take care of yourself better, you know? Um, I don't know. That's, that's kind of like what I want to say about it. And that's, that's how I feel about it. That's all I got to say about that one, to be honest. Um, I think this is just a, a week to really build up everything you need to cross all your T's, dot all your I's to get everything together to, uh, take care of yourself better. Um, and I know that's really like generalized for a new moon in cancer opposite Saturn, but this is also like, <laughs> this is almost like core ordered, like self care <laughs> is a good way to look at it. Saturn in Capricorn is literally like your boss or the court being like, you need to go home and take care of yourself before you die. Um, <laughs> that's the way I kind of look at this. So it's pretty serious shit. Um, but yeah, in another way to look at this week, not a lot's going on this week. Not much else is going to be taking your attention away from this. So while you're not distracted, use this while you can. So I think that's what I got for you guys. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I love you guys. Um, Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Super appreciate everything uh, you guys have done for me. Uh, really excited to do this new moon in Cancer next week, and then we get into Leo season next week. We also have the new yeah next week we have the new moon in Cancer. Uh, sun moves into Leo. Mercury's gonna sextile Uranus, and Mercury squares Mars. So next week doesn't seem bad at all. Next week just seems more of like we start something new, and then things happen after that. You know, it's a new story, right? You can't just go into a new story and then nothing happens. That'd be a boring, that'd be a very boring story. But um, yeah, but that being said, thank you guys again. And I'll be seeing you next week.